the most dangerous jobs in the military. Warfare is one of the most hazardous experiences that humans can be faced with. Virtually all jobs within a combat zone carry some degree of risk, but there are some tasks that are more dangerous or just plain more stressful than others. These are just a few of those professions. The EOD Technician in modern warfare, one of the most cost-effective ways to combat a more powerful enemy is not by direct confrontation, but rather to utilize improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, a much preferred method deployed by poorly equipped insurgent forces. These lethal contraptions can be placed virtually anywhere, especially where the risk of collateral damage is high. Once discovered, they have to be removed safely. Here is where the EOD technician comes in. EOD, or Explosive Ordnance Disposal Technicians, are specialists at disarming IEDs, mines, and other explosive devices. They come from every branch of the services, each with their own procedures and equipment, but their common goal is the same. After their training, they are deployed to war zones to clear IEDs and other hazardous devices. The process of disarming an IED is extremely stressful since even the smallest mistake can have fatal consequences. EOD operatives do have technology to keep them safe, such as remote-controlled robots, but these are not always practical and the EOD must work with a hands-on approach. They also have other forms of protection, such as the bulky bomb suits, but these are cumbersome pieces of equipment and can be more of a hindrance than a help, where any error can spell disaster. And even the most protective suit has little chance of stopping the force of a vehicle packed with explosives. Threats are not always so obvious, as insurgents often place IEDs in hidden locations to surprise the unwary soldier. A couple of times I've been right on top of an IED before I knew it, said U.S. Marine Corporal Chief Warrant Officer 5 Michael Gadeski, who served in Iraq. It's always the one you don't know about that's going to get you. I've definitely been one footstep away from stepping on something before I saw it. Because of the highly stressful nature of their profession, EOD operatives have a very high level of burnout in addition to the casualties suffered in the line of duty. Since September 11, 2001, 131 American EOD technicians have lost their lives and around 250 have been severely injured while performing what is arguably the most nerve-wracking job in the military, the Forward Observer. One of the most devastating tools used in the military today are indirect fire artillery barrages. Capable of hurling powerful munitions for miles, batteries of artillery and mortars can devastate the enemy positions while remaining safely out of range and out of sight of any return fire. Due to the long range of these modern artillery pieces and the fact that they can remain concealed behind hills, buildings, and other obstacles, the gun crews rarely see their targets nor the effect that their shells have when they land. The forward observer acts as the eyes and ears of the guns, relaying information to the battery. When a target is identified, the observer will call in the coordinates to the artillery crews who would then adjust their sights. As the shells start falling, the observer then marks the effect on the target, marking corrections so the munitions hit most effectively. In order to clearly observe the enemy positions, the forward observer is almost always within visual range of them. Though they can operate independently, they are often attached to infantry units, helping to support the troops as they advance. They share the same risks as their comrades, but carry an additional target on their backs. As they control a massive amount of firepower, the enemy makes them a priority target once they have been identified. Blending in is difficult, since they are equipped with radios and other communication gear, and in the midst of a firefight, will be calling in enemy positions rather than fighting directly, marking them for special attention. There is also the risk that they may make a miscalculation in the heat of battle. Should the observer send the wrong information, there's a risk that the artillery could miss the enemy, failing to support the engaged infantry, or worse still, land among friendly forces. This is exacerbated when danger close fire missions are called. Desperate situations that require artillery or mortars to land generally within 600 meters of friendly troops, something only to be used in the most dire of circumstances. Nowadays, this task is ever increasingly being taken up by airborne drones and other unmanned observation tools, but forward observers have some of the lowest life expectancies among soldiers on the battlefield. In high-stakes scenarios, precision and accuracy are crucial. Processing and relaying information correctly can mean the difference between success and failure. 
This is where effective training and continuous learning become essential. And that's where Brilliant steps in. Brilliant is an innovative learning platform designed to build understanding from the ground up. Their interactive problem-solving lessons are six times more effective than traditional video lectures. Crafted by award-winning experts from top institutions like MIT, Microsoft, and Google, the content emphasizes critical thinking over memorization, offering problem-solving activities that enhance your knowledge and reasoning skills. With its bite-sized lessons, Brilliant lets you fit learning into your schedule, providing a productive alternative to mindless scrolling. Brilliant's Predicting with Probability course is ideal for anyone interested in data analysis, whether you're just starting or already have some experience. The course covers key topics like Bayes' theorem and multiple linear regression. You'll learn to interpret and visualize large data sets and gain practical experience by working with real data. This makes complex data easier to understand and use in various applications. In the context of artillery, predicting with probability involves using statistical and mathematical models to estimate the likely impact point of a projectile. This process considers factors such as wind speed, temperature, air pressure, and the characteristics of the artillery piece itself. By calculating probabilities, military strategists can improve targeting accuracy, increasing the chances of hitting the intended target while minimizing collateral damage. This probabilistic approach helps manage uncertainties in long-range artillery operations, enhancing overall mission effectiveness. To explore everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit Brilliant.org slash Simple History or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now back to it. The Combat Medic when a soldier is injured on the battlefield, receiving prompt medical treatment is paramount to ensure their survival. To ensure that a wounded soldier is given treatment as soon as possible, combat medics are on hand to begin treatment even as the bullets are still flying, stabilizing their patients for evacuation to more extensive medical facilities. These brave individuals share the same risks as their comrades, such as gunshot wounds, IED detonations, and a myriad of other hazards in a combat zone. In addition to these dangers, there are many others that are unique to the medic. When a soldier is wounded by enemy fire, the medic will begin treatment as soon as possible, knowing that a second's delay can spell disaster. Often, this includes acting under fire, exposing the medic to the enemy while performing their duties. While the Geneva Convention forbids the targeting of medical personnel, this rule is not always followed, even by soldiers of signatory nations. Terrorist groups and other insurgent forces are not signatories of the convention and are therefore not bound to its regulations. These irregular forces will deliberately target the medic, knowing that the death of such a valued member of a unit can cripple morale. In order to protect themselves, medics are allowed to carry personal weapons, which they can use to defend themselves or their patients while still remaining under the protection of the Geneva Convention, though they lose this status if they use their weapons offensively. If wounded themselves, the medics will not always receive the best of medical care. Most patrols only have one designated medic, and while all soldiers have rudimentary training in battlefield medicine, it is not the specialized training necessary to stabilize the patient until they can be moved to more advanced facilities. They will find themselves under the care of comrades who may have their best interests in mind, but lack the skills to be the most effective. Another danger medics face is infection. While treating the wounded in a combat zone, it is not always possible to don protective gear, such as sterile latex gloves. While treating an injured soldier, they run the risk of contracting a blood-borne disease, compounding the dangers of this difficult profession. The War Correspondent Nowadays, the average person has access to breaking news from around the world in the palm of their hands. In order to relay this vital information to the general public, war correspondents place themselves in some of the worst conditions on the planet. Journalists in war zones share many of the same dangers that soldiers engaged in the fighting experience, but do so without the same level of training, protection, or equipment. When under fire, they may not know how to react properly, putting themselves at greater risk than the soldiers. Correspondents are unarmed, as they are classified as civilians under the Geneva Convention and international law. Some less than scrupulous sides in a conflict take advantage of this fact, sending journalists into harm's way, using their potential death or wounding as propaganda to demonize the other side. 
Many media outlets are underfunded and cannot afford to pay for professional correspondence. Because of this, many rely on freelancers, unaffiliated journalists who have less support than the professionals, and take risks that their more experienced counterparts would never even contemplate. This is compounded by the public's fascination with the risks of a war zone. Stories of reporters dodging gunfire or surviving artillery barrages sell much better than dull reports of casualty figures or troop movements. This encourages recklessness, increasing the chances of the journalist becoming a casualty. In this modern age, deaths, wounds, PTSD, alcoholism, and drug abuse are common among journalists who travel around the world, putting themselves in harm's way, armed only with a camera and a notepad. No matter what the profession, those in combat face risks that the average person can only dream of. For a few, their chosen occupation places them in even greater danger, but they still answer the call with bravery and distinction.